So I'm gonna be honest, I really thought I was going to dislike this bike. For a supposed gravel bike, the Hudski Doggler is kind of weird. It doesn't have curly bars and its geometry is definitely more mountain bike than road. Uh, but after a few weeks with the Doggler, I gotta say it has won me over. If you haven't heard of Hudski, it's a relatively newish uh, direct to consumer bike brand. Uh, their goal was to make a bike that could literally do it all. So they've got one frame that they build up in different specs to work as a city gravel and mountain bike slash bike packing bike. The only difference is some component tweaks. So tire sizes, handlebars, dropper, no dropper. Um, so, so small things, but essentially on the same frame. The Doggler fits into that non-suspension corrected, rigid only ATB category, which as you guys know, I've come to appreciate. Crazy, I know, but some people just don't want suspension. It's perfect for those that want some of the benefits of progressive mountain bike design, but don't want the weight, maintenance, and geometry constraints of a hardtail with a squishy front. I don't know why they don't just call them squishy fronts. The frame is aluminum and it has a carbon fork. Uh, the fork is nicely kitted out with all the mounts. This is also a little bit different. I know many of the bikes I've tested with, with a carbon fork. The first thing I do is usually email someone, uh, try to get a hold of an engineer and ask them if it is rated to take a uh, rack, to run the basket, all this stuff. And typically the answer is no. So this is kind of neat that it can do that. They've uh, reinforced the hole in the fork crown, presumably, so that this can happen. The particular build I tested was the gravel build. Looking at the cockpit, it is running their Longhorn bars, uh, which have a good amount of rise and a little bit of sweep back. You'll notice the little stubby stem. Uh, this bike has a longer reach and it's designed specifically for that whole short stem wide handlebar combo. So this isn't a road frame where they've slapped on some alt bars on it. It's designed specifically to work best with a stubby stem and wide bars. The bike has hydraulic disc brakes and it's outfitted with Shimano SLX and a nice wide uh, 10 to 51 gear range. This particular build also has a PNW dropper. One thing right off the bat that I loved about this bike is how thoughtfully spec'd it was for the price. There is very little I would change uh, on this bike except for maybe the saddle and the grips. You know, I prefer the ESI silicone grips. But other than that, it's perfect for the climbing rides we have here in Montana. So how does a bike with essentially progressive mountain bike geometry uh, fare as a gravel bike? Is it fast? Is it chill? Uh, before we talk about that, speaking of chill, definitely check out our new Chillur t-shirt designed by our friend Daniel Morgan. Uh, it's kind of a, a play on words, you know, there's punchur, rollur, uh, grimpur, for, for the roadie sides of things, and then we thought it'd be fun to have a chillur cyclist going for the chillest known time. So check those out in the links below. So first off, most of the gravel bikes I ride and enjoy are more road oriented. They're kind of like chubby, tired road bike. They're generally designed with a shorter reach to accommodate the length of a stem and then the handlebar and then the hoods. And, and they also tend to have steeper-ish head tube angles. Maybe the slackest they'll get is like 70 degrees. And the trail numbers are usually in the high 60s and low 70s. This is not that bike. Trail on the Doggler is a whopping 104, which is considerable, especially if you're used to road bike handling. The thinking, at least in terms of the curly bike world, is high trail uh, usually equates to bad handling, uh, in particular on slow speed climbs. The bike just tends to wander and it feels like a drunken goat. That's how I like to describe it. This would probably be true if uh, this bike with its 104 trail also had like a hundred millimeter stem and then handlebars and cantilevered you over the front. But surprisingly, because of the geometry, it balances out. You're more set back. You've got less weight cantilevered over the front. So the steering feels fairly light and it's just, it's not flopping all over the place like, like I was expecting. Between the low gears, uh, the relatively low weight, like this bike, as you see, it weighs in at 25 pounds. It actually felt pretty good climbing without any uncontrollable, like slow speed wobbles. On level terrain, uh, the bike just plows through everything. Nothing to report there. Going downhill, probably not surprisingly, is where this bike really excels. Uh, it makes short work of double track roads that I usually ride. And it's super fun on flowy single track. 
with the long front center and the setback riding position, uh, you never feel like you're gonna go OTB on the steep stuff. There's, there's also something about this progressive uh, mountain bike geometry that makes it easier and more fun uh, to go around banked berms. I don't know, may maybe mountain bikers are actually onto something. In terms of what other bikes this is like, Again, non-suspension corrected, uh, fully rigid. It's a bit of a rare bird. The Ghost Grappler is one that folks in our Discord uh, suggested might be closed, uh, but to me, the Hudski is definitely slacker in the handling. It's got higher trail and a longer rear end. Uh, the Ghost Grappler, to me, had a jumpiness that this bike uh, doesn't have. Another bike that people brought up is the venerable Kona Unit X. But, it, but again, that one is suspension corrected. It's got a short, shorter rear and it's not as slack in the front. So there are, there, there are differences that if you rode them back to back, I think you could suss out. So what are the likes and dislikes? Uh, the first like is aesthetics. Uh, I appreciate the earthy tones and the understated design. It doesn't scream Enduro Bro. Thank goodness. I, I love the utility. It has mounts on the fork uh, to put all the bags and a rack. It also has mounting points on the rear so you could run uh, panniers if you wanted to. It's, it's a bike that's meant to be part of your life and not just live in the bike park. I also really appreciate the build. I think the gearing is great, uh, especially for gravel and bike packing. Much more appropriately geared, in my opinion, than most gravel bikes that I think are over geared. And honestly, there's actually little I would change except for you know the grips, maybe the saddle, maybe fine tune the sweep of the bars with a different handlebar. But other than that, I think they nailed it. It comes in a great price uh, and there's not a whole lot to upgrade. So what are the downsides? Again, cost could be an issue for some. The higher build models are over or around 2K. And for that kind of money, some people expect uh, suspension. But again, for me, uh, I like a rigid specific design, so it's a feature, not a bug. And there is also a $1,600 build, which is also uh, a fair bit more affordable. What, one interesting con is sizing can be kind of tricky. Uh, I'm usually a medium, so small slash medium, and I'm testing the medium, but because of that slacker head tube angle, as it projects upwards, it actually kind of shortens, I think, the, the effective reach or something. So on the medium, it felt very upright and a little cramped, even for me. So it's weird to think that I might want to try a large, but here we are. I, I would suggest definitely sizing up. Another con is that uh, the geometry can be challenging for some. Uh, you know, if you're a mountain biker, this is kind of old hat, but if you're someone in the purely roadie camp, you kind of have to let go of some preconceptions, ride the bike for a while and get used to it. As, as someone that mostly rides more road oriented bikes, it took me, uh, it, it took some getting used to, to that higher trail. But that said, after a few rides, it easily became one of my favorite bikes in this year's test fleet. Another con is that it probably won't be as fast if that's important to you as a pure curly bar gravel bike because of the big meets and the more upright riding position. So you might not podium at the Belgium waffle ride. If you're riding JFF just for fun, then this bike is perfect. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think of Hudski's flat bar gravel bike slash ATB. I'm sure you have already. Uh, definitely check out those new Chilur shirts, buy some stickers, support the channel, and as always, keep the supple side down.